Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. This week we have a special guest on our show, Ken Bauman from Stacked EDH. He streams on Twitch, casual and competitive EDH, makes some really interesting videos for his YouTube channel and is also famous for building the Kraken Sakashima deck and pushing it to its popularity. This week, David brought all stick fingers again to see how it ventures against quote-unquote regular decks. Ken brought nothing other than his thumbless dude and the copycat. Bal is on his Edric list trying out some new goodies from Innistrad and later fell in love with Tavesh Chrome, and also wanted to try out against something other than three opposing Taveshes. David kept his first 7 and quite a good one, and Shantumb and Bloodstained Mire for lands with an Arcane Signet and Felwar Stone for ramp. 5 mana achieved and he still has Exhume and Life and Death to start the reanimation loop. He only lacks protection and 2 mana. Noxious Revival is also a versatile card. Ken went second and Mulligan down to 6, keeping a river glide pathway and a mountain for lands. Mox Diamond will allow for a turn 1 crack and he has already found its lost thumb. Birgi is also great in his deck paired with free spells or even rituals. And Submerge is unfortunately lacking an island on his side. He sent to the bottom Force of Will. Bal Mulligan down to 6, hoping to hit a Null Rod effect or some other interaction. He kept a Dryad Arbor and an island with a Lenoir Elves for ramp. Mausoleum Wanderer is a 4 spike on a stick, as well as Mental Misstep can be good to stop any Mana Vault or Soul Rings from the fast decks like Stick Fingers or Crown. Cyclonic Reef can also be good to try to stop David's combo and he sends to the bottom Hope of Girapur. Lastly, Late kept his first 7, also filled with great card quality. A single Blood Crit but paired with a Mana Crit and a Lotus Petal for ramp. Brainstorm can dig him some stuff and Gamble can be aimed at some fast mana, for an earlier commander or a combo piece. Deflecting Swat is always great to have and Notion Thieves can be key versus Edric or paired up with a Will. Ready for this match? David opens things up with an Ancient Tomb and casts an Arcane Signet, finishing his turn. Ken gets to his turn and plays a Mountain. He then casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a River Glide Pathway, which allows him to cast this cool looking crack, the Thumbless, from his collection of many. Bal plays an island and casts his Mausoleum Wanderer, also passing. Blade plays an untapped Blood Crypt, paying 2 life and casts a Lotus Petal into a Mana Crypt and then casts a Gamble. With 4 cards in hand, Bal suspects he is going for a Will, so he lets it resolve. He tutors for a Mana Vault and readily discards a Deflecting Swat. He casts the Mana Vault and now Bal decides to stop him there with a Mental Misstep. Without much creatures on the board, Tavesh would get out of control quite easily. David gets to his turn and plays a Bloodstained Mire, cracking it for a Bayou. He then casts his Felwar Stone and passes. Ken unfortunately hasn't found a land, so he goes for a Fateless Looting. However, Krak says no, and bounces it to his hand. He then casts a Mana Vault and goes into combat, attacking late for two and passing. Bal draws and slams the top deck Flutter's Grove on the field. He attacks late as well and passes, holding on to the Rift. Late script roll comes successful and he hopes to draw a land, but unfortunately it is not, so he is forced to pass. David probes players' hand sizes as he's quite the patient player. He plays an Urza Saga and casts a Golgari Signet, achieving the 7 necessary mana to go for it next turn, if he feels like it. We're now on Ken's turn. He opts for a land, but also fails to find one, so he casts Beardly God of Storytelling, which everyone is pretty much aware of her potential. With the last floating mana, he casts Krak's Thumb, triggering Birgi and it does resolve. With the red floating, he casts his Fateless Looting, triggering Krak and Birgi. However, late responds with his Notion Thief, and suddenly the scales can tip. With Krak's thumb, Ken can try to choose a failed flip in order to bounce the Fateless Looting to his hand. Since he is looking for interaction for David and Thief is also bad to Edric, Bal decides to respond with a Cyclonic Rift on the Thief, hoping that Ken stays in the game and late doesn't run away with it, while everyone will still need to be worried about David. Birgi nets Ken 1 red mana and he then rolls 2 kinds slash dice, and one comes out even, so he copies the looting. He is desperately looking for at least one island for his submerged to get online, but unfortunately fails to find it, so he ends up discarding it in the second looting. He then plays a command tower and goes to combat, now attacking David because of his ad nauseum and life requirements for the Resicath tutor chains. It's now Ball's turn and he plays his dried arbor and also attacks David for one. He then casts a ghostly pilferer and passes. Late keeps winning those script rolls, but he's also on a trend of not finding lands, so he's forced to pass, unfortunately. David draws and his Urza Saga triggers, gaining another ability. He thinks for a moment and decides to go for it. He casts a Cabal Ritual without Threshold, which would be enough to get his commander plus a reanimation effect. Bal ponders on the options of David doing this for the extra mana to pay for the Mausoleum, so he cracks it right away, hoping that it is enough, since every other piece of the combo are creatures. David does pay for it to resolve, and then proceeds to cast the old Sticky Finger! 
triggering Ghostly Pill for it and Bal draws, and then buries alive all three creatures from his deck. The Vids Exhum doesn't help here, as it would also bring Mausoleum Wanderer again, but he has life on death, with which he casts Death, returning Young Necromancer to the battlefield, losing 5 life and triggering it, exiling 2 cards from his graveyard to return Razaketh to the battlefield. He then sacrifices all Seek Fingers to Razaketh, leaving it in the graveyard, searching for a Lion's Eye Diamond, which he casts and cracks for a triple black. He then sacrifices Young Necromancer to Razaketh and searches for an Animate Dead, that he casts, returning Young Necromancer again to the battlefield, triggering and exiling two other cards from his graveyard to return Witherbloom Apprentice to play. He then sacrifices Witherbloom Apprentice to Razaketh to tutor for Sacrifice. He also sacrifices Young Necromancer to tutor for Dance of the Dead and proceeds to cast Sacrifice, sacrificing Razaketh as an additional cost, gaining 8 black mana. With it, he casts Dance of the Dead on Young Necromancer, triggering and returning Razaketh once again to the battlefield. He then sacrifices Young Necromancer to find a Persist, and only to reanimate Young Necromancer once again, triggering and returning Witherbloom Apprentice to the battlefield. He sacrifices the poor Young Necromancer one last time to find Shane of Smog, and casts it on himself and chooses to copy it repeatedly, killing the table through the Magecraft triggers from Witherbloom Apprentice. Arrivederci. This was quite a quick match, so we decided to do another one. This time, Ball won the dice roll, and once again Mulligan down to 6, looking for a null rod effect. He found a wooded foothills and rejuvenating springs for lands, with a single arbor elf for ramp. Fairy Miscreant is a rogue to enable Notorious Strong, Swan Song and Nature's Claim for interaction, and he sent to the bottom Reclaim. Late Mulligan once and kept a handful of ramp, City of Brass, Snow Covered Swamp, and Underground Sea for lands with a Sol Ring and Green Monolith, easily allowing him to cast any of his commanders on turn 2. He still has Spell Pierce and Unsubstantiate for interaction. David kept his first 7 with a bit of everything, Bloodstained Mire, Prismatic Vista and Lanwar Waste for lands, with Felor Stone for ramp, Sylvan Library for card draw, Force of Vigor is mainly to remove stack pieces and reanimate at the ready to start his convoluted loops. Lastly, Ken Mulligan once as well, keeping an Island and a Shivan Reef for lands, with a Mystic Remora that might not see much action, unfortunately, as he is the last in turn order. Mana Vault for Ramp, Solve the Equation is a good tutor, especially if he manages to copy it. Pyroblast for Interaction, and Storm Kiln Artist is a great way to generate mana on storming turns. Ready for round 2? Ball starts things up with a Wooded Foothills, cracking it for a Tropical Island, and then casts an Arbor Elf before passing. Blade proceeds to his turn with a Underground Sea into a Sol Ring, into a Grim Monolith, claiming his chances to cast a Vash this game are higher. David plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Bayou, finishing his turn. Ken plays an Island and casts a Mystic Remora, set for his position in turn order. We're back at Ball and he plays a Rejuvenating Springs and casts a Fairy Miscreant. He then untaps his Tropical Island with the Arbor Health and passes. Blade plays a Snow Covered Swamp and finally gets to cast his Tavesh. Remora triggers and he can't pay. However, Ball responds with a Mana Drain, also triggering Remora and unable to pay. Fortunately for late, he responds with a Spell Pierce, triggering Remora one last time and resolving his Planeswalker. He activates it, generating two Thralls and passes the turn. David plays a Lenore Wastes and casts his Sylvan Library, triggering Remora and is unable to pay. He passes and Ken gladly lets the fish die, as he netted him four cards for one blue. Still great for someone last in turn order. He plays an Ancient Tomb and casts a Rhystic Study, upgrading his fish. He discards two hand size and passes. Ball plays a City of Brass and casts a nicely top decked Phyrexian Revoker, triggering study and not paying. It enters and he names Tavesh. He then attacks the Vid and passes. Late plays a City of Brass and a top decked Jeweled Lotus. Rhystic triggers and he pays for it. He cracks it to cast Chrome, triggering Rhystic, but not paying this time. He goes to combat and attacks the Vid before passing the turn. The Vid's library triggers and he pays 4 to keep one extra card. He plays a Prismatic Vista and cracks it to get a Swamp. He then casts a Sol Ring, preemptively paying for the Rhystic, and follows it with a Felor Stone, also paying for the Rhystic, but Crumb triggers as well and late draws. He still casts a Carpet of Flowers, triggering Rhystic and unable to pay. He then passes with at least 7 mana in his next turn, ready to go off. Ken plays a greatly written self-explanatory mountain and then proceeds to cast his Mana Vault. With the floating mana, he casts another awesome-looking Crack the Thumbless, triggering Crumb for a card. He still casts Krark's sidekick, Sakashima, which enters as a copy of Krark, evidently. He discards to hand size, Stormkill Artist and Pyroblast, which hints at a juicy hand. Ball draws and plays an island. Feeling a bit behind and the need to police the table, he goes for his Edric. 
as the Vidan can appear to be able to win next turn. Ristic triggers and he sadly doesn't pay for it. He then goes to combat and sends the Fairy at late and the Revoker at the Vid, triggering Edric twice. He draws and passes with 4 cards in hand. Late plays a Verdant Catacombs and cracks it for a Badlands. He then attacks the Vid for 4, triggering Edric and drawing a card. And on his second main phase he casts an Arcane Signet, triggering and paying for the Ristic before passing. The Vid draws a single card from the Sylvan Library's trigger, plays a Marsh Flats and probes hand sizes. He patiently passes the turn, hoping someone else will try to do something and people spend their interaction. Ken takes one ping from the Mana Vault, draws and plays a Shivan Reef. He then casts Cracks Thumb and suddenly the game might be ending soon. Late thinks for a bit but fires an Unsubstantiate on the Sakashima Crack, paying for the Ristic Trigger. However, Ken responds with a Fierce Guardianship, triggering both Cracks and Chrome. The first Quark's trigger copies it, and the second one sends it to his hand. He then goes to combat and attacks the Vid with both Quarks, triggering Edric and drawing two cards. On his second main phase, he casts a Mana Crypt and proceeds to cast Solve the Equation, triggering both Quarks. In response, the Vid hard casts a Force of Vigor, preemptively playing for the Ristic Trigger. He targets Quark's Thumb and Ristic Steady. Ken then responds with his Fierce Guardianship, triggering both Quarks, and in response to the triggers, Balantaps his Tropical Island with the Arbor Elf to cast Swan Song on the Fierce Guardianship, not paying for the Ristic Trigger. However, Ken still has something to say with the mental misstep, triggering both Quarks. Bal had a nature's claim that he forgets to use it at this point, and it ends up being a costly misplay. Ken rolls two dice and chooses to put the misstep on his hand, and on the second Quarks trigger, he rolls twice again and chooses to copy it, effectively countering the Swan Song. He then rolls 2 for Fierce and chooses to put it into his hand, and on the second crack trigger he rolls 2 again and manages to copy it. So as he is rolling for the solve of the equation, he manages to pull the impossible with 2 tilted dice. So I guess the game is a draw, right? He re-rolls of course and chooses to copy the spell, finding a deflecting swat. And then on the second trigger he chooses to copy it again, to look for his swan song and then the final one resolves and he tutors for a mog salvage which he starts casting, and as he rolls two dice each time, he chooses to bounce it the first time and copy it the second time. This way, he is able to destroy Latus, Arcane Signet, Soul Ring and Grim Monolith, then David's Soul Ring and Felor Stone, and despite Late trying to convince him to do it as well to Phyrexian Revoker, Ken is happy with it on the field. He discards two hand size and passes this juicy turn. Bal draws and jumps straight into combat, attacking Ken for five, as he is now the arch enemy. Edric triggers three times, he draws and plays a command tower. He casts Mausoleum Wanderer, triggering and paying for Ristic. He then casts Eladamri, Lord of Leaves, triggering Crown and Ristic, and he untaps his Tropical Island with the Arbor Elf to pay for the Ristic. Suddenly, the scales have turned and the table wants to avoid losing to Ken's next turn. Late did draw a Gilded Drake, which he casts, knowing that Ken will swat it. He does pay for the Ristic, and Ken indeed casts Deflecting Swat, triggering both cracks. Ball responds to the trigger with a Nature's Claim on the Crack's thumb, unable to pay for Ristic. Ken then responds with his Fierce Guardianship, triggering Crown and late draws. Ken rolls two evens, so he copies the Fierce. On the second trigger, the table calls for another double even, but it is the complete opposite, two odds, sending Fierce to Ken's hand. Swat's triggers now resolve. The first sends the original Swat to his hand and the second copies it, changing the target to Fairy Miscreant. Late then goes to combat and attacks Ken, triggering Edric and drawing a card. He plays a command tower, and on his end step, the Vid cracks his marsh flats for a tapped overground tomb. On his turn, he draws a single card from the library and plays a Cabal Pit, which unfortunately is missing one card from Threshold, and Ken still has a SWAT in hand. He goes to his second main phase, adding two pink mana from carpet to cast his old stick fingers, X equals 3, so he will be able to block one crack if Ken wants to draw more from Edric. He is unable to pay for Ristic and then buries alive all three creatures from his deck. He has a spell that cares for the Graveyard Order, so he puts Young Necromancer on top, and is forced to pass as Ken still has plenty of interaction. Will they have another turn cycle? Ken rolls two dice for the Crypt and chooses not to take three damage. Nice stuff that Thumb does. He takes one from the Vault and then casts a Gitaxian Pro, paying two life to see David's hand. Both Crack trigger and he chooses to put the original into his hand and then copy it. He then does it once more, targeting late, triggering Chrome and late draws. Ken is curious of what Late's open mana is for, and chooses to copy it twice, letting it go to his graveyard, seeing Bal's hand as well. Quite the Yogmoth's bargain he had there. He plays a Fire Islet and then casts a Pyretic Ritual, to which Late responds with a Chain of Vapor on the Phyrexian Revoker, to force Bal to spend some of his resources. He pays for the Ristic Trigger and then Bal is forced to copy the Chain, by sacrificing an island and trying to bounce Sakashima, as it costs more. 
In response, Ken casts a Swan Song, triggering both Krarks and late response with his mental misstep, unable to pay for the Wistic trigger. However, as everyone already knew, Ken casts his Fierce Guardianship on the misstep, so now the game is in the hands of the RNG gods. The first trigger he chooses to return it to his hand, while the second one copies it. Now, the Swan Song's first trigger he chooses to copy it, and the second one he chooses to bounce it back to his hand. We are now on the ritual triggers, and the first one he chooses to copy it. And the second one, there's no choice to be made, but it does copy it as well, netting him a total of 9 red mana. He then proceeds to cast Birgi, and then follows it with a Heat Shimmer on Sakashima Krark, triggering both Krarks and Birgi, and he holds priority and casts Dual Caster Mage, entering and copying Heat Shimmer that will target Dual Caster Mage, and enter a loop where he creates a bajillion copies of Dual Caster Mage with haste and attacks everyone for lethal, finally ending all stick finger supremacy. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone. That Cyclonic Rift on Notion Thief in game 1 probably gave the win to the vid. And the Nature's Flame not casted in response to the misstep might have cost game 2, as Krark's Slam secured all the lines Ken needed in order to win the game. Comment below if you found other key plays you enjoyed or could swing matters in a different favor. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, TJ Rap, Mike Poor, A Jimu, Drunken House Cat, V, RJ, Heated Chill, Pina, Ricardo, Dragon Sake, and Katerina, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander Adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDAs related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!